Greetings, everyone. Greetings, greetings. Welcome to Chronicles of a Nonprofit, episode 34. Today is August 31st, and we are excited to be in the studio with our students. We have 14 students in the podcast right now. Super excited. It's not a full class, but it is a very valuable um, amount of people that I'm grateful that you've made it here to the podcast. Thank you so much for being a part of Chronicles of a Nonprofit. And again, today is August 31st, 2023. Happy birthday. Shout out to my twins. A universal birthday shout out and a physical birthday shout out to my beautiful twins. <laughs> so I do want to say that today several, several decades ago, was a very exciting time for me as a parent. Becoming a new parent to twins was awesome. So as we move into the chronicles of a nonprofit, I'm going to share with you a few detailed uh, pieces of information that I think you need to know so that when you do come to a session here, you will know exactly who we are and what we're doing and why we do what we do. So when you come to our sessions, you will more likely see these two logos, the Youngstown Community Center, which is a nonprofit organization in the city of Youngstown, Ohio, 1413 Belmont Avenue. And the mission of Youngstown Community Center is to provide multifaceted programming opportunities for the low and moderate income individual. We are a commercial building that allows individuals to believe in themselves through storefront leasing and opportunities for uh, getting business development up and running. Okay, so you're at the grassroots level when you deal with the Youngstown Community Center and Scales to Success project together. Now, Scales to Success has been existing since 2006, where Scales to Success LLC is a business development organization that provides business planning and proposal writing, grant writing, and uh, portfolio building, along with entrepreneurial practices. And this is where the Chronicles of a Nonprofit comes out of. Scales to Success is the generator and business developer for the Youngstown Community Center, which is Scales to Success's client. And uh, the board of directors are out of California. Wonderful, wonderful group of people. We have a community advisory board here in Youngstown, Ohio as well. So if you would like to be part of that project, please give us a call, 330-956-0511. That is a way that you can get in touch with both Skills to Success LLC if you want to become a client or if you want to um, just ask some questions about business development and then the Youngstown Community Center as well. So what I want to do today is take some time to share with you what I get when I receive my emails. So I'm going to try to keep everything in its rightful place, but I want to share this with you because I think it is a very powerful tool. This tool is necessary because this is how we do get in contact with our clients. And we also give them the opportunity to know that they have um, what it takes to go through the classwork, go through the coursework, and also to, I'm trying to put all this together on one screen, and I don't think I'm going to be able to do it, because it's a lot of images here. There are a lot of images and not enough space. But anyway, there we go. That's as good as I can get it, so that you'll see everything. So basically, the emails is where you submit your first introduction that you are interested in becoming a client of Skills to Success. And then what we'll do is we will do an interview and then we'll see what fit you are for our client base. And then we move forward. So there was this young lady who has now become a part of 
of the program and she's out of the Midwest and uh, what she wanted to do was discuss options, some things that she has about her business. Now, many times I may not be able to screenshot or pull up a YouTube or a Gmail account email because of HIPAA rights, because of reasons that is specific to your own business. So, but when there is a vague email, I'm going to use those to give you an idea of how you can write to me. The first thing that was um, questioned in another email was, how do I refer to you respectfully? Because I don't use the titles as much as most doctors would do in the field of education, I would say you can call me Dr. Dorina, you can call me Dr. Shine, you could call me Dorina, you can call me Dr. D. It doesn't matter as long as you're comfortable, you know, because when you become a client of mine, you're going to begin to feel the the connection and it's going to become uh, it's going to become natural for you to talk to me. So in that instance, I think it is very important that uh, we have, um, I'm sorry, we're having some some students coming in and they're really, really happy. <laughs> so <clears throat> what we're going to do is just also share with you the vital importance of how to just write an email simply. So this lady, she's from the Midwest and she wrote an email to me about being on a podcast, and she wanted to know about the Chronicles of a Nonprofit. Now, Chronicles of a Nonprofit is a part of the Youngstown Community Center Skills to Success collaboration concept, and it gives you the basic, the mission of Chronicles of a Nonprofit is to give you the basic structure of, uh, you know, once you become an entrepreneur, you're going to go through some challenges. You're going to go through successes and you're going to go through some challenges. So we want you to know what you're facing when you're looking to be an entrepreneur, when dealing with the community at large, when you're dealing with public in energy, there's going to be a lot of things coming at you. So we want to get you prepared and ready for that. So you won't buckle under pressure. That's what Chronicles is all about. So she says, um, I really like how you make the class discussions realistic to the entrepreneur and how we will eventually deal with life lessons in the business. Some are positive and others may not be as productive as we may like. And that is absolutely true, Sophia. However, they are all learning experiences. And that's what I like about it. You know, it's, it's the concept of how you see it becoming in your life. Can you learn something from it? Can you learn how to better and tighten the game of entrepreneurship when you're dealing with these more difficult situations? That's the key to Chronicles of a Nonprofit. So as a new entrepreneur, with your help, I just received my LLC. Congratulations, Sophia. I'm so very happy to be a proud owner of a horse training company here in the Midwest. As you have advised, it is important to prepare my students. Yeah, you're going to be a leader. There you go. To prepare my students to be ready for my instruction. And we all do it differently. We all do our instruction differently, Sophia. So having faith in yourself is the key. I am grateful that you are on this journey with me. I am as well. Um, I wish someone had been there to take me through the process and tell me everything I was going to experience prior to. Um, But I did have some very valuable leaders. I had some very valuable, you know, instructors, my mom, first and foremost, my grandmother, as I watched them, you know, build their businesses, home-based businesses back when I was very young, moving into the entrepreneurship and workmanship of the public being a first lady and, um, in religion. And uh, so I've learned some things, some things that I've seen go through the process. And I realized that I won't be that. 
I will do other things to make sure that I don't have to go through that. I'm grateful that you're on this journey with me. My questions for this session is how do I keep myself professional when I'm faced with those hard to deal with clientele? Secondly, will training another individual just come naturally as I have been writing and learning since the age of nine and I am 24? I just have never trained another person. And finally, what are my next steps? Well, first of all, Sophia, I again want to thank you for reaching out to the Scales to Success LLC project and and realizing that this is something that you wanted to take advantage of. You wanted to do something different. You wanted to motivate yourself in a different light. And with your age, I think it's very vital. It's important because you're going to be able to maneuver a lot better. And by the time you're in your 40s, um, you're going to be a pro at this thing because of the fact that you started so young. And that's what I like. I like entrepreneurs with the mentality of start young, finish young, you know, because what's going to happen is that you're going to either get a a realistic life checkup, check, you know, uh, a real, uh, what do you call that? You're going to get a life check, (laughs) which is going to say realistically, this is something you don't want to do, or it's something that you love to do passionately, or you're going to burn out. So it's up to you to take it slow, to focus on um, listening to others and growing. Because once you get at that midpoint where you know it all and everything that you you know is from whatever, uh, you're going to learn that you're going to burn out a lot faster because those things could be outdated. Those, you know, concepts and those research opportunities can no longer exist because you got to remember since the pandemic, entrepreneurship and business development has changed tremendously. Some of the things that would work in a fast pace, you know, as long as I'm smart enough to get it and I can manipulate and get what I want and speak as fast as I can in order to get my product sold, that can no longer happen because you have a lot of people that are getting business development advice. You're having people with business consultants that are truly passionate about what it is that they're doing in their business concepts. So they're going to tell you things that you would normally not hear. So keeping yourself professional when you're facing these clientele who come with their dilemma is going to share the, the, the project that you're not going to be able to please everyone. So one of the things you're going to have to do is get a tougher skin. And at the age of 24, you really don't know what that means. You're like, okay, I'm tough. I can be tough, you know, but you have not experienced the, the worst case scenario client. You have not experienced the individual who comes into your establishment and disrespects you because they don't know themselves. They don't know. They don't care. They don't want to know. They just see you as This is something that I could have did, but I'm not you. And so I'm going to now try to sabotage and devour what it is that you've created for yourself. And if you have a weakness because of your youth, Sophia, one thing you're going to have to understand is the importance of standing up for yourself, not allowing anyone to bully you, not, and you're going to learn that here, here at Scales to Success. You're going to learn how to professionally deal with a clientele on a, on a situational basis. You're going to know when to put on the hat of the professional narcissist because they've made you do that, you know. And these are the things that I've learned from some of the strongest women that I could ever encounter outside of my household. They were already there. They taught me. They trained me. So... You're going to learn how to deal with those hard to deal with clients. And they're not going to be as many. So I need you to know that. Okay. They're not going to be as many, especially if you have your professional skills down pat. You have all your documentation. You have a organized structure. 
that you run your company under. We're going to get you everything you need from, you know, um, documentation that you can put on the wall to show and uh, agreements that you're going to have your individual sign with specific things inside of it that is unique to your business. And that is what's going to, if it's etched in stone and you've gone over it through your agreement interview, you're going to have less issues. You're going to have less problems, okay? And I'm faced with those hard, okay. Secondly, will training another individual just come naturally? Well, that's up to you, Sophia. If you train a person and that individual is someone who uh, catches on fast, it's based upon what you do in your training. It's based upon how you choose to set your training style up. Okay, if you're more of a visual trainer, then you're going to have more um, visual depictions of how you're going to train this individual to ride. If you're hands-on, you're going to have that kinetic way of showing the individual exactly what they're going to learn from you. If you're auditory, it, it just really depends on what type of leadership style you have. And when you pick that up, then what's going to take place is you're going to find ways to get them to understand your point of view. So I also believe that that is going to um, come naturally. It definitely will um, come naturally because you're going to learn from trial and error. So that's something that is important. And uh, by you being a avid horseback rider and this is your training session this is your training company you're going to learn to teach people the tricks of the trade so you're going to go in and you're going to more or less be like a leader such as myself you're going to go in and find the quicker way to get your client to a faster place than where you were at the stage they began. You started at nine, so you know what it feels like to fall off of the horse. You know how to get back up. You know what happens when you need to heal. You know how much time that takes to heal. You also know, you know, how to breed your horse, um, how to purchase a horse. You know how to do all those things. So in that, this is an example of what the training will look like when in any business, when you're focused on your topic and your topic is horseback riding. So you're going to train them in the best possible light that you can. And you're going to do all the terminology that works around the horse industry. You know, you're going to know, you're going to tell them the difference between a thoroughbred and another style of horse. You're going to tell them what the qualities of a horse is if they choose to buy one in order to be able to train when they're not with you or on your in, in your facility. I think it's a wonderful creative opportunity as an entrepreneur for you, Sophia. I further feel that um, based on my concepts of communicating with you as a student of Skills to Success, I truly say that I believe that you have the qualities to be humble when you're explaining. You know, if somebody does not get it, you know, because everything is a process, okay, in any business sector, everything is a process. So if they're not able to get the process immediately, I'm sure you're going to take them and you're going to strategize ways that they can learn the process. You know, some people learn slower, some people learn faster. So you're going to have to know how to get in there and critique what type of learner your trainee will be. Okay. And finally, your next steps are to stay in touch with me. To continue to move forward with your business development plan, your uh, portfolio building, your um, 
strategies of who you're going to get to sponsor your and back your idea. Um, and this is a great idea and investors are going to come to you and they're going to be requesting, you know, opportunity to be a part of your business. And these are things that only you can build for yourself, the credibility of who you are as an entrepreneur in this field. So I'm thankful that you gave me the opportunity and the right um, to be able to do this podcast so others can see that they can take their idea and they can move it into a higher level of experience so that they can be the best in the industry. Because the goal, again, as I tell you all the time, all my students, and we are now in the room with 16 students. So two more showed up. Thank you. Thank you. And to me, I'm grateful for everybody being here. But as I always tell my students, loyalty, commitment, dedication, morals and ethics are the very thing that's going to guide your career into the path of least resistance. So you're not going to have as much stress as someone else will because they're going in to the business with a false sense of ownership. You're more real, you're more true, you're more passionate, and that passion is what's going to drive you to be, do, and have much more than you ever could imagine. So I thank you so much for being part of Chronicles of a Nonprofit, episode 34. This is the business development conversation with Sophia in the Midwest. Thank you so much for, you know, allowing me this opportunity to share this experience with you. It's a wonderful thing. Uh, I will be able to travel and come to see you. And once we get everything together, we're going to start getting the uh, location and the property cleared out so that we can, you know, really and truly get that, you know, exercise for the horsing, um, for the horses and, uh, yeah, just get them ready, get them ready for success. And this right here is a unique creative business. And if you would like to start your own entrepreneur business, um, involving something you already do, something you already love, don't hesitate to send me an email, scales to success LLC at gmail.com, or you can give me a call, 330-956-0511. Thank you so much for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to this podcast. We love all of our beautiful students. We thank you so much for believing in the Scales to Success LLC project here in Youngstown, Ohio. You have a blessed and remarkable day, and we'll see you soon.